High Adventure. Tonight's story is entitled HMS Suicide by Alan Campling. It was well into 1943 when I got my orders at Brooklyn Navy Yard to report at Scapa Flow, off the north coast of Scotland, to a vessel called S-54. I made the crossing in a very uncomfortable aircraft and landed to find that S-54 was a British craft, which was bad enough, but also a submarine, which was worse. Still, Lieutenant Commander... <laughs> Excuse me. Lieutenant Commander Dougie Haig and his boys eventually got over the shock of meeting an American. And by the time we were pulling into Gibraltar Harbor, everybody was relaxed and friendly. We were really buddies by that time. Or so I thought, anyway. All right, pilot. Left hand down. Save the juice. Take her in. Aye, aye, sir. Three degrees to four percentages off, speed, sir. Say, Captain, I think your boatswain's pulling your leg. Gracious me, Yank, when are you going to learn to call him boatswain like every other human being in this sub? You're a great one to talk about using the proper terms. What's this uh, left-hand-down stuff, anyway? Well, I thought it would help a landlubber like you to feel more at home. We don't often have a soldier aboard, you know. Seamen traditionally think that's bad luck. And from the way you've been going through my whiskey ration, I'm inclined to agree. Okay, I get it. The fact is, the only other time I was on a boat was when we... a boat? In a ship, if you don't mind. If you say so, Skipper. Anyway, that was a U.S. vessel, and they're dry. Dry? I think they would be. They never go to sea, do they? Oops. (laughs) I should have said teetotal. Yes, I don't wonder the American fleet takes so long to get into war if they don't get a rum ration. I promise to replenish your liquor supply just as soon as we land in Gibraltar. Hmm. I must admit I'll be glad to stretch my legs on dry land. <laughs> that Atlantic sure can throw a boat, uh, a ship around. Well, it'll be more peaceful for you in the Mediterranean. We've only got the entire combined Italian and German fleets to throw us around there. And if you don't count their air forces, which personally I do... Just my luck. I was hoping we could travel on the surface for a while after all that underwater stuff. Mm. Uh, you'll get used to that if your mission with us lasts much longer. Whatever that mission may be. Now, don't let's start that again, Dougie. I keep telling you, I don't know my ultimate mission any more than you do. Right, and I keep telling you that as captain of this submarine, I ought to know your mission, whether you do or not. Well, there's the flag lieutenant of the Admiral's barge. I suppose I'll be wanted up at Government House. Maybe someone up there will know what this little trip's all about. And maybe I'll wish I'd never been told when I find out. Commander Douglas Hay reporting, sir. HMS Submarine S-54. Oh, good afternoon, Commander. Oh, do take a chair. Have a fair trip. Uh, middling, thank you, sir. I was told to see the Admiral here, sir. Yes, that's all right. I'm using his office. I wanted to give you a personal briefing. I, I'll have to be brief, too, if I'm to catch my plane back to London tonight. I don't want to take off after dark and run into any opposition. You're from London, sir? Yeah, flew in this morning to talk to you. Now, don't mention that to anyone, will you? In fact, everything I say to you here is top secret. And I mean top secret. Your um, crew isn't to hear your orders, not even your, uh, your, what do you call your second in command? First lieutenant, sir. Oh, very odd, you Navy people. You're a lieutenant commander, they call you captain. He's a second lieutenant and you call him first. Oh, well, I suppose the Admiralty know what they're up to. You're not from the Admiralty, then, sir? Oh, gracious, no. I'd be obliged if you didn't ask where I am from, or indeed any other questions. I'll tell you what you need to know, and Major Lee will get his orders separately. How are you getting along, by the way, that American Army officer you brought out? Will he have orders that I don't know about, sir? Oh, now then, my boy, I did warn you against interrogating me. But I don't mind telling you, he will. And where they appear to conflict with your own orders, you will obey his instructions. Is that clear? With respect, sir, that isn't possible. 
In the Navy, a captain is wholly responsible for everything and everybody in the vessel yes, which he yes, commands. Yes, 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 never mind that now. Everything will be cleared with you, Admiral. Uh, you'll find it's all cut and dried. Now, I understand your boat has five ballast compartments instead of the usual three. Is that so? I beg your pardon, sir. But you'll appreciate I don't know you from Adam. It's more than my job's worth to discuss naval architecture. Yes, quite right, quite right. Forgive me. I'm afraid I can't tell you my name, but here's my authority. I wouldn't want you to think I was a spy or something. Leastwise, not an enemy a spy. What? Does that letter satisfy you? Well, it certainly gives you carte blanche, sir. But I don't recognize the signature. I don't believe I've ever heard of an Admiral George... And while I don't want to appear to be uncooperative... Uh, that's not an admiral's signature, my boy. That's the king's. Oh. Oh, I see, yes. see sir. Yes, quite so. And you can rest assured that what I tell you in his name can override any routine matter of naval procedure. What? Hmm? Well, I, I mean, it's his submarine, isn't it? And he's paying your salary, too, so perhaps you won't object if some of my instructions on his behalf, well, all of them, as it may be, are a little, uh, shall we say, unexpected. Hurry that work along, Swain. We're shopping off tonight. Tonight, eh? The lads was looking forward to night in the town, sir. Well, they're not getting one. Send the master at arms to get them back here on the double. Yes, sir. That Yankee officer, too, sir. Oh, yes. I'd almost forgotten about him. Ask him to come back as soon as he can make it, will you? Take him on to Malta, are we, Skipper? Who said anything about Malta? Well, nobody said anything about it, sir, but anybody could guess that from what we're loading. I see. And what are we loading? Well, don't you know, sir? If I knew, I wouldn't have asked you. Well, yes, sir. Call, sir. Well, mostly petrol, sir. Aviation fuel. High octane stuff. That's right, sir. And there's only one place around here that's got to get its aviation fuel by submarine. I should think so, too. Using my ship as a tanker. Well, they can't use tankers, sir. Surface vessels can't get through the enemy air cover from Italy and France. I don't need a lecture in contemporary strategy, thank you. Where's it all going? Ballast compartment, sir. And the dockyard workmen took out one of our batteries to make room for more petrol, sir. Have they, indeed? I wonder they didn't offload the torpedoes as well. Oh, that's all I need. Half my electrical storage gone, so they can only stay out of the surface half the usual time. That's just great. Sir, they did offload the torpedoes and sealed up the tube, sir. Oh, that's really going too far. I'm not using my torpedo tubes for petrol storage. And I'll tell the commander-in-chief, sir. Well, they've not put petrol in them, sir. Haven't they? What then? Uh, shells, sir. IT. High explosive shells for Pete's sake. That's right, sir. Anti aircraft shells, big ones for the Malta defenses, I suppose. Don't keep talking about Malta. That's the way rumors get spread. Hi there, Douglas. I got you some scotch. Hey, say, you guys are certainly in a mess around here. Well, there's one man we won't have to fetch from the pub. Now, don't talk about Malta in front of him. You hear me? I ask if it. See, that's your brawler of yours is some place. Like a little bit of old England straight off the calendar, except it isn't raining. Douglas, I want you to have dinner with me tonight in the best restaurant in town. There's a couple of girls I met. You won't be here long enough, Major. Huh? Now that you're aboard, you can stay aboard until we sail. I do, Douglas? But look, I, I promised this girl in her You're under with... my orders, Major. Hey, what's with this Major stuff? I was yanked this morning, Douglas. Well, now you're Major Lee, passenger, and I'm captain to you. What? Hey, Bosun, is something wrong? You will not address my crew except through me. As long as I have command here. When you usurp my command, when you take over, Thanks. then... Thanks, taking over, sir. Is that what you say? Look, I don't propose to say everything twice, Bosun. It's bad enough having to say once that another officer, a, a soldier, not even a British officer... Sir, are you on the level? Major Lee, it appears that for the first time in the history of the Royal Navy, a history that goes back several hundred years further than your entire country's existence... A vessel of His Britannic Majesty is about to fall under the strategic and technical command of... of an ignorant and unseaworthy foreigner. I could see why Commander Haig would be sore. And it was tough to have him sore at me when I didn't know what he was talking about. Whatever he'd been told at his briefing on the rock was a secret from me. I had my orders in an envelope in my jacket. They were sealed. And the idea was that Haig would be told by radio when I was to open them. He was mad enough to spit. 
From his attitude towards me, as much as by what he said, I could see that he bitterly resented the idea that he wouldn't be master in his own ship once my orders were opened. I stayed away from the command center all I could from then on, lying in my hammock and trying to figure what was going on. But when Dougie Haig eventually took a nap, I tried to pump the bosun, without distracting him from his job of conning the submarine, of course. Hi there, Swain. How's she going? Every Major Lee. Everything on the control, sir. Ah, uh, don't you start with that spit and polish, Swain. Call me Yank and make me feel like one of the family again. Sorry, sir. The skipper's order, sir. No fraternizing. Oh, sir. for Pete's sake. <laughs> now, look. Tell me one thing, anyways. How come we're spending so much time submerged, hmm? I mean, when we were in the Atlantic, we surfaced at night to recharge the batteries or whatever. Can't surface, no matter, sir. Too many enemy aircraft about and a sub chasers could detect us and blow us out of the water. Oh, okay, I was just asking. But I thought somebody told me you had to come up every so often or your batteries would run dry. Uh, quite right, sir. Well, haven't you already passed the limit for underwater running? Nearly halfway to the official limit, sir. Oh, only halfway. Well, that's okay then, isn't it? Well, not really, Major. You, you see, we've only got one battery at the moment and so the usual two. Only one? Is that enough to get us to Malta submerged all the way? Oh, come on. I've guessed it's Malta, of course. Well, I can't say whether it is or it isn't, sir, but uh, I can tell you that if it is Malta, we're heading for. No, we can't make it under the water all the way. Uh, and if you surface to recharge the batteries from the diesels, we'll be a sitting duck crammed full of high octane petrol and high explosive ammunition. Oh, but that's crazy. Major Lee, I've confined you to your quarters because you're using up oxygen unnecessarily by standing up, walking around and talking. There is a limited supply of breathable air in a submarine that's running submerged. And it's my responsibility and my duty to conserve it for essential purposes. Now get back to your hammock and stay there until I send for you. Or else what, sailor? Or else you'll continue this voyage in irons. Do you hear me? In irons. Chain to a stanchion. And don't think I won't do it. You may be going to take my ship away from me before this voyage is over, but until your orders are open, you will obey mine to the letter. Boy, I just hope my sealed orders include dumping you over the side. I'll obey that one to the letter, all right, and with pleasure. Take on, Skipper. Battery capacity reading. It's coming up to the red line, sir. Oh, that's great. The red line? What's that all about? Well, if you're going to be in control of this vessel, Buster, you may as well know. As soon as that pointer reaches the red line, we have to surface in the world's most heavily patrolled sea lane, right under the noses of all the anti-submarine fights the enemy can put up. Well, I hope you know where to find enough power to keep us underway then, because you're going to need it. Excuse me, Skipper. Read your message. Right. Thank you. Well, here it is. I am formally ordered to instruct Major Lee of the United States Army to open his sealed orders, and thereafter to accept any orders that he may give as to the disposition of my vessel and my crew. Well, she's all yours, Admiral Robert E. Lee. I opened the sealed envelope with a certain relief. Fortunately, the first paragraph was fairly straightforward. and more Commander Haig's business than my own. Captain, I have a course correction for you. Well, don't tell me. I'm just part of the furniture around here. Tell the boatswain. Well, it's kind of hard to figure, but uh, just north. Just north. Beg pardon, sir. Battery's almost exhausted. Number one. Sir? Prepare to surface. Aye, aye, sir. But well, that's ridiculous. Everything to the north is enemy-held territory, isn't it? Well, I'm glad you know that much anyway. Yes, under your new and, I should think, short-lived command, Major, this submarine is going to be sailing to the surface towards Italy. And it's my guess. They'll not only be delighted to see us, but they'll welcome us with open arms and a, a salvo of armor-piercing shells. This is Torpedo Boat 27 calling base, Sergeant. There is a vessel ahead of me now. A small one to south and heading right after me. I will investigate. Over and out. Torpedo Boat calling base. Request airstrike. The vessel is a submarine. Over. Request denied. You'll investigate further. Most unlikely a submarine is heading towards Italy on the surface unless it is friendly. Repeat. Investigate further. Ship and starboard blast, Where? Ah, yes, yes, I've got it. 
Oh, kicking up quite a bow wave, too, for a little one. All right, Admiral. I'd say you have a torpedo boat coming to pay a call. Do your orders cover that situation, too? They do, Captain. Train your orlican, your four-inch gun, and all other deck-mounted weapons to the stern. The stern? Are you off your head? The torpedo boat's on our bow. Those are the orders, Captain. But that's insane. What else do they say? Run up the white flag? Uh, funny you should mention flags, Captain. There's a further order here, and you're not going to believe it, I can tell. And when you do, you're not going to like it. Torpedo boat 20 stem calling base. Confirming that vessel is a submarine. I'm close enough to fire. Request permission to attack. Over. Not to believe your report, Tenente. Are you sure they're close enough? Over. Of course I'm sure. I could hit her with a rifle bullet. Wait. There is activity around the deck. Yes, they're training their deck armament. Permission to open fire. Urgent. Over. Confirm and amplify nature of the deck activity. Over. Hello, base. Hello, base. They've trained their guns aft. Repeat, aft. I'm off their bow. Repeat, bow. Instructions, please. Over. Understand the submarine is training its armaments away from you. I'm reporting for higher orders, Lieutenant. Report any other activity. Over. They are hoisting a flag. One moment. Yes. It's a white ensign. This is a British submarine. And wait. Hello. H hello, base. The white ensign is upside down. Repeat. Upside down. Over. Upside down? Mamma mia, Tenet, do nothing hasty. The CNC will have to figure out this one himself. Keep them under observation. But whatever you do, do not open a fire until we know what the devil is going on there. You and the submarine have orders to take you under arrest. Do you understand me? You will obey my orders or I will blow you out of the sea. You hear what I'm saying? Well, Admiral Lee, it seems you're not giving orders here anymore. Now the Italian Navy's taken over. You didn't last long in command, did you? Or do your secret orders cover this situation, too? They sure do, Captain. Get out there! I am Major Robert E. Lee of the United States Army. Do you hear what I say? I hear you, sir, and you make your brother not understand. Who is commanding that submarine? Is it British? I do not understand. I have a message from my president to your Mussolini. A personal message. A message for you, Gucci. Is that what you say, Major? That's right. I have taken possession of this British submarine. I have to deliver an urgent message. What are your orders? Momente, wait a momente. I will report what you say to my admiral and get his orders. He will do and await my reply. If you attempt anything foolish, I will put a torpedo into you. Stand by for orders. My machine gunner has everyone on your bridge in his sights. Gonna make one false move, or you are all dead men. Oh, my dear chap, you don't imagine that even a thick lieutenant in the Italian Navy is going to swallow that load of nonsense, do you? A message from President Roosevelt for Mussolini. It doesn't matter what he thinks, Captain. Neither he nor his admiral at the base is going to stick his neck out and decide it's nonsense, just in case it isn't. All he can do is ask us to come into harbor and talk it over. And as you can see, that's just what they have done. Inviting a British submarine into a harbor full of warships. They must be as crazy as you are. Not really. They've ordered your deck guns unloaded. They've sent an officer aboard to confirm that you have no torpedoes. You're harmless. And you can bet that once we've got past their entrance boom, we'll be right under the guns of every warship and shore emplacement. What have they got to lose? Well, I don't know why you're so proud of yourself. You surrender my ship to the enemy without firing a shot. You calmly propose to walk into their trap like a fly into a spider's web. I think you once said, Captain, that doing your duty without questioning orders is part of the grand old tradition of the British Navy. Well, how's about doing just that without all the complaining, huh? <laughs> Say, look, there's the outer defenses of the harbor now. I think you'll admit they're running no risk by asking us to drop in for a little chat together. 
Base are calling torpedo boat 27. Tenente, I have the commander in chief's orders for you. He has a check with Rome and the British submarine is to follow you into the harbor. If there is any sign of trouble, you are to fire a red signal rocket. Over. Message received and understood. But what happens when I fire the signal rocket? Over. <laughs> oh, Tenente, there will be the greatest bombardment since Alamein. And I'm very glad I am not sitting in the water a few meters from where it will all come down. I wish you good fortune. Over and out. Avanti. Ah, come in, come in, Tenente. And you too, gentlemen. <coughs> For you, the war is over. Please be seated. I'm a base commander, Svorza. You can give me the message from your President Roosevelt for El Duce. Well, go on, Yank. Give him the message. Admiral Svorza, the message is, if Signor Mussolini will eat more lettuce and cut down on the spaghetti, he'll live long enough to be hanged for war crimes. Admiral, the Armand, what can be the meaning? Silence, Antonante. Be... Major Lee, I suppose you have uh, some reason for this uh, insulting and ridiculous performance. Admiral, I wouldn't assume anything reasonable from this officer. Thank you, Captain, for your loyal support and understanding. Admiral, I'll appreciate it if you will kindly order your boom defense controller to remove his anti-submarine nets, surface boom, and other obstructions so that the submarine S-54 can leave here tomorrow morning without any difficulty. Major, I'm uh, trying to control my impatience. Good heavens, I think I'm beginning to see. Look, Yank, I, I think I owe you an apology. <laughs> That's okay, Dougie. I was baffled there for a while myself. You demand that we let you go free tomorrow? Tenente, I shall not tell you again to be silent. Gentlemen, I'm waiting for your explanation. How can you make these ridiculous demands as if you expect me to comply with them? You are caught in this arbor like a fly in a spider's web. Funny thing you should say that, Admiral. Sir, with all due respect, we're more like a tiger that you have by the tail. Oh, explain this, please. That's quite simple, Admiral. That submarine is crammed full of high-octane aviation fuel and high explosives. You dare not fire on us. The explosion would damage every warship and every merchant ship within a mile and more. And wreck your harbor installations. Oh, no. That's perfectly true, Admiral. And if I were you, well, the first thing I'd do right now is order that helicopter to get right away from that sub and stay away. He could have an accident, crash under the sub and send it sky high, and your entire command with it. I do not believe what you say. If this is true, why then the explosion would destroy your vessel and wipe out your crew. It would destroy this room we are sitting in and you with it. And you, sir. Admiral, I believe you have no choice. My orders are to sail from here tomorrow, escorted by any vessel of your choice. You, sir, will be kind enough to sail in that vessel as a hostage. It'll remain within ten meters of the submarine, and you'll give orders that we're not to be attacked. If we are, you go down with us. Or up, as the case may be. And uh, if I refuse? Oh, you can't refuse, sir. You're sitting on a bomb of unimaginable force. Your fleet will remain in this harbor for 24 hours. Because if even one vessel attempts to leave, my men will fire on it and sink it. It will not dare to fire back. Because if it does, the explosion will destroy it and everything else in range. Well, cheer up, Admiral. It's no disgrace to bow to the inevitable. I'm afraid you've been defeated by the Major's new secret weapon. HMS Suicide. <laughs> The next day took its place in military history as the day of Operation Torch. Under the Supreme Allied Commander, General Eisenhower, American, British, French, and other Allied troops landed in North Africa. It was the biggest and most bloodless mass landing that had ever taken place. It would have been a costly failure if the Italian and German navies had interfered. But all their Mediterranean ports had received an unexpected visitor the day before a single British submarine under the command of an American army officer with a cargo of certain doom that was also his free ticket out of there again.
High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Duffenthal. Thank <laughs> you.